Your movie Lola has 27 executive producers? Yes. Can you explain how that works? I did a crowdfunding because I didn't have all the money to pay for it. So I did a crowdfunding and just gave everybody EP credits. And um, no equity, just credit. Okay, and this was on which platform? Oh no, I just hit people up. Text, email, blast. I did a little bit in the go-go, but it was it good. So I just hit people up regular. So you did the Antoine Allen crowdfunding yep. campaign. You know it. Okay. Yep. Okay. And so uh, where do you post the people's names? Just in the credits and on credits the website? In, 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 um, on the IMDb mm -hmm. and in the movie. So how many people do you think you actually text or emailed? A lot of people. How many? Maybe 40, 50 people. Okay, and so around half or so yeah, said half, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Closed mouths don't get fed. If you want something, you gotta ask for it. Okay, and um, how, may I ask, what was the amount that most people put in? 5,000, 10,000, around there. Hmm. And what did you have to show them? Well, they already knew my resume already. I've done tons of films already, so it was a yes or no. And sometimes Rizwan the one said no, they just didn't have the money. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And so, by what, how, like, how long did it take to raise that money? A month. One month, mm -hmm. okay. And so, how much money was that? So, I put in 65 of my own money, and I raised like an extra 25,000. And this is for Lola 1? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, Lola 2 now has five executive producers? Yes. Are you one of them? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, then you reached out to how many people? Really one person, and then... A lot of other people was just friends that had me a connection, a location. I just gave them a credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you have, aside from yourself, four executive producers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What changed? How, how come you had 27 before and then for Lola 2, now you have four aside from yourself? Proof of concept. Lola 1, no one believed in. Lola 1 worked. So now I don't have to, I went to like one or two people to get the money I need and that was it. Um, one of the, the biggest investors I had that paid for the majority of the whole film was a producer I met on Clubhouse. Her name is Monica Floyd from True Vision Media Group. Um, she's an angel. She's a guardian angel. Because around COVID happened, I wanted to do Lola too, but I didn't have the funding like that. So she invested the majority of the film. And I love her for that. And Clubhouse is? It's a social media app. Um, I like it because not like Instagram and Facebook, you actually talk to people. You have a human human conversation with them. And we was in a room, um, I was talking about film, and I said something about, I don't know so many people that's only content. And she checked me. She said, what are you talking about? I'm a producer in LA. I owe my contact. And I was like, wow, I didn't know. So she educated me. Most people, they would have an ego like, who are you talking to? But no, I was here to learn. And she educated me, said, Anson, you don't know about me, but I do this and this. And when I found out who she was, I was like, wow. And she believed in me. She wrote the check and produced the whole film with me. So from the time that you met her on Clubhouse, what was the time span then that you started filming Lola 2? So it was a miracle. I met her on Clubhouse in March. I went to L.A. to meet her face to face in like April, May. In July, we started filming. Oh, wow. She was, I said she had a guardian angel because met me. My words match my action. In this industry, most people talk. With her, she was like, what do you want to do? Let's do it. And now we unstoppable because you don't meet people like that on the regular. But that happened because I was ready to prepare. You know, the old saying, you stay ready because you have to get ready. So I had all my ducks in a row. I did projects before and we just hit it off. And um, it was a blessing. What was it about Lola too that made her want to invest? It was really me. That's not I tell people too. Sometimes people want to invest in your project. They want to invest in you. So I tell people all the time, be a good person. Be about your business. Be kind. But really, it, it, I, right now, if it was another movie, she would just be invested in me. Because she believed in my hustle. And she see that I'm out here doing what I got to do. And she's giving back. So um, Monica will be watching this. So I appreciate you. Okay. So shout out to Monica. Shout out to Monica Floyd. Okay. And Lola 2 is finished or a couple we more in, scenes? We in post, almost done, wrap, and it will be releasing next year. Wow. Yeah. Do you have like an email list where you keep all the Lola 1 people? Yes, informed? I do, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when they, well, not sometimes, when they go buy my merch, I got the email address. 
I'm really uh, active on social media. So I talk to people, get the information. I try to, I try to stay active. I learned that from Tyler Perry. When Tyler Perry first came out, he still does it, but not so much. He have an email list. He's the email, send an email back, thank you everybody. Have a human, human connection. Um, I learned that from Tyler Perry to really connect with your fans, make one fan at a time. Because those are people that are gonna keep the lights on. Let's go back to Monica for a moment. So what was the pitch? You said you met her on Clubhouse, which mm -hmm. is a social media app. Mm -hmm. So once I met her on social media, once she checked me, because I, I didn't know who she was, um, we talk on the phone, went back and forth. I show her Lola One, but really it wasn't even a movie. She really believes in me. And sometimes you help people. Like I help a lot of people, I help a lot of actors, film. I help a lot of people because I believe in giving and helping people. But this was just karma coming back to me. Everybody that I help, everybody I looked at, because it could be any movie. I think she still would invest because she believes in me. And sometimes it's not about your project, it's about the individual. Sometimes I help people or I invest in people, had nothing to do with their project, it's because of them. So there was no pitch? It was a pitch. People don't realize when you open your mouth, you're pitching. It don't have to be a form, it have to be a PDF, you're pitching. When you walk in the room, it's your brand. So when you open your mouth, so people don't realize that's a pitch. So be ready. So when someone say, hey, I'm interested in you, know what you're talking about, be a man of your word, be about your business. So don't do, don't, people don't realize that your pitch is yourself. You're pitching yourself. When you walk in the room, you're your brand. So that was a pitch. Is Lola a brand or is Antoine Allen a brand? It's all together. It's my baby. Wh which brand do you think is stronger? Lola. Why? Because me, I'm an individual, but Lola is a story that takes someone on an emotional roller coaster and deals with pain, trauma, underdog, triumph. And Lola, I'm the first person ever to make a female boxing franchise. Never been done before. It's my female version of Rocky. Like with Million Dollar Baby, nope. do you, do you, I know it wasn't a franchise. What, what similarities are in that character and then how is she totally different? Totally different. One, she's African American. Two, in Million Dollar Baby was an old woman getting into boxing, so it was like night and day. Um, but with Lola, Lola is a, a woman that had nothing to do with boxing. And she used training and self-defense because she didn't want to be a victim no more. And she tumbled into boxing. So most boxing films, or all boxing films, the family's a boxer, they want to be a boxer. She never wanted to be a boxer. She just wanted to do self-defense and she fell into boxing. So it's almost like Boys Don't Cry and Million Dollar Baby in, in some similarities. No. No? No. It's Lola, one, one of one. Lola's her own person? Yep. Does Lola feel real to you? Yes. It's an underdog story. It's, you know, she turned her pain into to purpose. She took her pain instead of dwelling in it. She took her power back. She was a hero in her story. And the same thing with me. I came from home to the beginning. Now I'm a hero in my story. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that this was a short film I did eight years ago. Split Decision was Lola. It was a, at the time I didn't have the money for it. So I did Split Decision, I did a short film. So I tell people to do baby steps. Sometimes we can't get the big budget. So do baby steps, do little pebbles. And it was a short film and eight, nine years later, we had a franchise. What prompted you to do the short film? I wanted to do a film after I got out of the, the music business. I wanted to do something that stands out. And every time I go to the film festivals, it's the same exact stories, dramas. So I said, what did I could do to stand out? And I did a female boxing film. And that was expired because of Rocky. Like, I love the Rocky franchise. And Sylvester Stallone's story is just amazing, if you, if you know it. And so would you go to rings and see some of these women boxers or, or you know, mixed martial art fighters? When I was young, I used to box. I used to box in Gleason Gym in Brooklyn. And I love boxing. And I used to see female box. And I was like, why have never been an African-American boxing film? A franchise. So with me, a lot of times we look at things we complain. I say, you know what? Send me complaining. Let me be the solution. And that's what happened. Did you used to see a woman that reminded you of Lola? No. Oh no, never. I just, this was, I use my imagination. So you're working on Lola 2 now, almost finished. Yes. What happens after Lola 2? We put it out next year, and next summer, hopefully, we get ready for Lola 3. I'm gonna do a trilogy. Do you think you'll stop at that? Um, no, I'm probably too alone to a TV series. Why do you think people want to see her journey? Why, does, why is one movie not enough, two movies, and maybe three and beyond? Um, it's me. 
I, I don't think the story is complete. And then I want to do my own female Rocky franchise. And um, I just love the franchise. I said, let me do something different. Because as filmmakers, we don't think about franchise. We think about one and done. I'm big on franchise. Like, I love franchise. So um, this would be one of my first franchises, but I have some more, and it works. How do you pitch Lola? What do you mean? When, when you go to pitch it or when you're sort of in your mind, if you do go and pitch this TV series, mm -hmm. what what is the pitch? Well, actually, Lola 1, 2 is a pitch because it's proof of concept. I did it already. So really, with anything, um, if you pitch in a project, it's already done already. You already have the proof of IP, so it's an easy pitch. to be like, hey, I did 1 and 2. Um, it's doing really well. Let's do a series. So, you know. Well, let's say there was a party, and let's say this is so you, you and I are there at the party, and mm -hmm. I'm like, "Oh, really? You're a filmmaker? Oh, and, and you have this? Ooh, tell me what is? Tell me about Lola." Lola is a female boxing film. It's an underdog story. It's my female version of Rocky franchise, and it's the first ever African American female boxing franchise in the history of cinema. And and why is Lola for a broad audience? Because it's an underdog story. The average person means an underdog story. When you see the rich people, that's 1%. The average person, I know more poor people than rich people. And that's why they connect to it. And women run the world. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think even rich people, so the quote unquote 1%, maybe can identify with being an underdog in a sense yeah, that they maybe can. they've been crushed in a business deal or yeah, they can. family squabbles or whatever? Yeah, they can. They can. But I know the majority of people are underdogs and they're looking for their fight. So um, we could go to the movies and see the big hero movies, that's great. But I'm big on watching movies that have a human connection. I didn't go to film school, I didn't have no mentor. This is a straight God gift. Like I said before, someone told me I'd be doing this, I laugh in their face. This is I don't have, like, I don't, like, things I'm doing, I don't, just, it's God gift. I don't have no training, I don't have no mentor, I didn't go to no big film school, I didn't have nobody. It's just my God gift talent. Do you think people are taking you more seriously because you've created a franchise? People are taking me more serious because I'm consistent. When you're consistent and you're not going away, like I've been doing this a long time, like a long time. Most of my life I've been entertaining business. So yeah, take me more seriously because I'm, I'm not going away. I'm still around. I'm not stopping. Some people have seasons. My season hasn't ended yet. So it's just I'm being more consistent. When you're consistent and they keep seeing you year after year, it's like, wow, this guy's not playing around. How have the conversations changed? Dramatically. Because most independent filmmakers are not making money. Like I've done 20, over 20 short films, three to four features, like I'm consistent and I execute. Because at the end of the day, you have all the money in the world or connections in the world, it's all about execution. So now, you know, Lola 2 is, is, is uh, it's amazing. I can't wait for everybody to see it. How can you tell, though, that people are taking you more seriously? What, what do they ask or what do they say that's different than before? They want to give me money. <laughs> okay. I think that, that's a good indicator. Yeah. yeah, They want to give me money and they want to help me. They see the vision now. They see what I'm doing. You know, you put in your work. You know, you put in your hundred something hours and you will get rewarded. So I'm seeing that. And now I'm working with name actors. Lola 2 is my first film. I mean, well, Lola 1 too. I work with Taja V. Simpson, amazing actress. Um, she's on Tyler Perry, hit shoulder oval. And I'm working with named actors now, so that's another indicator like, wow, people want to work with you. You know, it's a journey. 